Um, so, so far we've done a lot of looking at fractions in terms of parts and holes and fractions in shapes, which is hopefully is really good. Um, but we also need to be able to position fractions on a number line, um, and that's another form of fractions. And when you can do that, it's really helpful in understanding then fraction and decimal conversions. So that's where we're heading to in, in this video. Now, being able to convert between fractions and decimals might be something you can already do. And if that is, then watch the video. It'll help to build your understanding. And then in the task C, your challenge is coming. Um, but this is going to be really good for building everyone's understanding and giving everyone some challenge as well. Um, we're going to do, as ever, a little start recapping on yesterday. Well, let's start our recap from yesterday, having a look at this example, which you might have seen yesterday, or this might be the first time you're seeing it. Um, so which shape has the larger fraction that is shaded? Which shape is the larger fraction shaded orange? And explain how you know. Uh, pause the video. Okay, and let's have a look. Um, well, of course, shape B has the larger piece that is shaded. Um, that This is a bigger piece than this piece. But actually, shape A has the larger fraction because it's got a, a smaller hole. Um, so if you look at the part here, this white part that isn't shaded, that is a quarter, so three quarters must be shaded. And actually shape B, this is less than three quarters shaded because this part here is more than, uh, is more than a quarter uh, of this one. I couldn't fit as many as four of this part in this hole. So actually the larger fraction that's shaded, that must be shape A. I also wanted to have a look at another of the independent tasks you were set yesterday, um, where you were asked to find the fraction of this square. Um, and my suggestion would be to split this um, shape into sections um, to see if we can work out the fraction of each part. Um, now, a way that I did that was this. So let's have a look at this part. So if that's the whole shape there, the whole blue shape, if we just look at this part of it, I actually know that's a quarter. Um, so just this part I know is a quarter because if we have a look, it's like I could split this into four equally sized triangles and they are, they are four pieces there. So this part is a quarter of the square. And that just leaves the other, the other section there. Um, so we know that, that this area here, which is now grey, is a quarter. And actually this must be an eighth as well. Because can you see, if I, if I divide up the square into these equal parts, then this is one out of eight of those equal parts. Um, so to work out how much in total, well, we had that quarter and that eighth. So an eighth add a quarter is three eighths in total. So yesterday our emphasis was finding fractions of shapes. Today it's looking at finding the position of fractions on number lines and then relating that to decimals. Um, so I've called this one line up fractions. Now finding fraction and decimal equivalents is something that's difficult to master. And then, but some of you might have already understood that. And if you have, follow on, along with the video, but your real challenge will come at the end. I've got a how many ways challenge for you on the independent task, which I'm really looking forward to getting to. Um, now let's see if we can build understanding. So if I was positioning half on a number line between 0 and 1, then half will be right in the middle. Can you see it, it's a bit like here in this longer rectangle, I've split it into two equal halves. And in just the same way, thirds, well, one third will be here, two thirds will be there. So it's like this shape split into three equal pieces, um, just like the line is being split into three equal pieces. And similarly, quarters. I, I'll need to split the, the distance from 0 to 1 into four equal pieces. Um, I, I'm going to change that top example to make it into sixths there. Um, so can you see we go, this is where one, six and two, six and three, six and four, six and five, six would be positioned, um, breaking that line up equally. And let me just remove those boxes and let's see those equivalent fractions, fractions that are the same. Two sixths is the same as one third. Um, four sixths is the same as two thirds. This space is just double this space, for example. And three sixths is the same as two quarters or a half. Now have a look. Which answer's correct here? So the fraction at this red arrow, which is halfway between zero and a sixth, is is it a twelfth or is it a third? Pause the video. Well, let's have a look. Well, it is actually half of a sixth. Now you don't just half six because a third is more than a sixth. The sixth is a smaller piece. So it is actually a twelfth. Um, and see if you can estimate the fractions here. Now you won't be able to answer this exactly, but see if you can think, well, what fraction could this one be? What fraction could this one be? And think about which fraction will be, will be larger. Um, so pause the video, have a go at that one. Okay, let's have a look. 
Now we can see the top fraction will be larger because it's further along. It would be hard for you to see exactly what it is. I'm going to put a line on that splits this line up into equal pieces, three equal pieces. So there I've got a third. Um, and again, the example below, hard for you to see exactly. If I put those lines on, we split that line up into four equal pieces. And so there we have a quarter. And of course, we can see that a third is larger than a quarter. Um, so let's see if we can relate that to uh, decimals. Um, now, when you first uh, you saw a number line counting on, it would have probably gone from zero to 10. And then you'd have counted on in steps of one. And we have this base 10 number system. We count in sets of 10. We might then have got to a zero to 100 number line when you counted in steps of 10. And here we have a zero to one number line where we count in steps of 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. Now that's very similar to counting in tenths, of course, because we're doing the same thing with fractions. We're splitting this number line into 10 equal pieces and we're counting up so we can see, for example, four tenths is the same as 0 0.4, two tenths is the same as 0 0.2. It's a very similar system. It's a base 10 system. Um, now, here again is that is that number line going from 0 to 1, our decimal number line. But have a look at the difference here. When, when we divide our number line into four pieces, um, I can see that a quarter lands in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 because a half is the same as 0 0.5 because uh, it's, it's a halfway. 5 is halfway to 10, 0 0.5 is halfway to 1, and this is half here. 3 quarters, 0 0.75, um, and a misconception children can have, for example, is we might think, well, a quarter will be 0 0.4 because the 4 is the same, but of course it's a different system here. We're not dividing this line into 10 pieces, we're dividing it into 4 pieces. And similarly, let's have a look at the example below. Um, so this time I split the line into fifths, and can you see that each, um, each fifth there is worth two of these jumps, because I'm splitting this line into five pieces, not into 10 pieces. So, for example, 3 fifths is the same as 0 0.6. It would also be the same, of course, 6 tenths. Now, have a look. Which fractions have been positioned correctly on this number line? Um, pause the video and see if you can see. Okay, and uh, if you're ready, let's have a look. I I'm actually going to start with 5 thousandths and 65 over 100. Well, 0 0.1, like we said, is 1 tenth. So halfway is actually five hundredths, not five thousandths. So this one is incorrect. And 65 hundredths is correct because this would be six out of 10 or 60 out of 100. That would be 70 out of 100, halfway 65 out of 100. To look at the other fractions, we'll bring up those number lines we've just looked at. Um, so a fifth, yeah, we can see a fifth is the same as 0 0.2 because this is 10 steps here. Um, and this is five steps, so a step of, of a fifth is the same as 0 0.2. How many 0 0.2s to get to one? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Just like we've got five fifths to get to one. Is a quarter 0 0.4? Well, we looked at this one before, no. Because look, here's a quarter in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, and here's 0 0.4. And 0 0.4 is larger than a quarter. So for today's task, again, click on that blue link underneath the video. This time, there's a task A and B and C. Um, I try and make the tasks quite open-ended generally, but um, being able to convert fractions and decimals is something you maybe haven't learned about much. You might be in year five and you haven't done it at all, or it might be some, something you've already got a lot of skill in. So I've tried to give lots of options. Um, so task A, which fractions have been positioned correctly and true or false. And then in these examples here, of these three, which one is the odd one out? And then of these three, uh, these fractions and decimals, which one is the odd one out? Uh, similar style for task B. Now, if you're very fluent already at being able to convert fractions and decimals, have a go at task C. I would do that to start off with. There's a, uh, a reasoning question to start with. And then there's a how many ways task. So you've finished that one if you know how many possible answers that there are. And there couldn't possibly be one more. Um, the answers themselves are at the bottom. Um, and um, I hope it's been really, really helpful. And of course, we're going to keep going tomorrow. And again, well done for joining in.